Hello and welcome back to On Air Airline Manager everybody and today I'll be showing you how you can earn your very own free aircraft when you start your company. Uh, I'll also at the same time be showing you how to set up and complete your first flight in On Air Airline Manager and that will give you a bit of a chance to understand how the On Air client interacts with uh, your simulator, you know what happens before, during and after the flight and all that sort of stuff. So uh, stay tuned for all of that. I uh, just want to say a huge thank you very much for all your support. Uh, remember to smash that like button down below and if you're new consider subscribing, it costs nothing at all except a little bit of self-respect. And uh, just before we get into this, uh, go and check out my beginner's tips for On Air Manager. If you're new to the game, uh, that will give you a few ideas around how to get the uh, most out of your company when you first start. Also just explains a few uh, things you might not know about. So with that said, let's get into it. So you've set up your company, uh, and here I am in the On Air lobby page, and how do you earn your aircraft? Well, this is one of the tips I had in my beginner's tips video, and that is that you complete the On Air tutorial. And you'll see right here, we've got this panel. If you do complete the tutorial, you earn yourself 7,500 credits, thank you very much, and also a single piston aircraft. Uh, and that's obviously gonna save you money on having to rent aircraft and all that sort of stuff. So it's well worth doing. The, obviously the other benefit is you get to learn about the game and how to set up a flight, and that's really what it takes you through. So we're gonna do that. So we'll go ahead and we'll go uh, click on the tutorial. We'll just wait for it to load up. And here it is here. It gives you a bit of a story saying, hey look, uh, this will get you started with on-air airline manager. Uh, and there goes the rewards right there. So I'm going to restart because I actually was just testing a few things out before so I started the tutorial. So we'll just wait for that to load up. Okay, and here's the screen that I've uh, got after loading into the tutorial. It actually creates another tab up the top there. You can see it right there and um, uh, it sort of takes you into a different part of the game basically. So I've already set up my simulator when I set up on air so it should be defaulted to your simulator you're using. If it's not, it shows you how to go ahead and pick the directory so it's all set up properly. And you've got two options here. One, you go ahead and fly with the simulator so that means you're actually gonna complete the jobs yourself. Um, you can also still use AI pilots by the way to complete the jobs but this is uh, giving you the option to do that or you can just purely play in tycoon mode where you do no physical flying yourself. I'm going to fly with the simulator so I'll press that. Okay, not long after it uh, then says, hey, you've got a new job. So these instructions right here just step you through how to set up your flight and then, uh, you know, how to set up the client basically. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward, but what I'll do is I'll step you through it as I, as I do it. If you're not too sure or if it's the first time you've done it, then I suggest reading through this in conjunction with the manual and it uh, makes it nice and easy. So we're going from Myrtle Beach, which is our home base, through the KNBC. So let's go and check out the live map and, um, and get into it. Okay, here we are sitting at uh, in the live operations map uh, and we've got the little card here which shows that we've got a plane available and that's what we're going to be using for the tutorial. Uh, as you can see, we don't have much fuel in it so we're going to have to refuel it. But really to set up a flight, uh, you just click on this little icon here that says prepare the next flight. So boom, click on that and then you get to the first of the preparation pages. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got enough fuel uh, for the comp uh, for the flight itself, so 50% uh, should be enough uh, for this particular flight. It's around about 100 uh, nautical miles, I believe, there or thereabouts. And so just select that and make sure you've got enough fuel in your aircraft. Uh, over here, what sort of cargo you're going to be transporting. In this case here, as you can see there, it's 115 nautical miles, by the way. It tells you how far away it is. Uh, so uh, all you need to do to grab this tutorial card cargo, or if you're setting up any other flight, that's not a tutorial you just click the box and it will then go ahead and load up your aircraft so what you can do is you can go down here and either press confirm fuel and payload and it will just do initial step of just loading up your plane uh, or you can go confirm and fly now which means you go to the apron step which allows you to get straight into the flying so just before you ever do this by the way just check out your weight make sure that everything's under your total gross weight that you're allowed uh, and it will give you a notification turn red in here if it's uh, overweight. Uh, so you'll just need to check that every time because obviously as you add fuel in there, that's gonna adjust these numbers here and reduce the amount of cargo and passengers you can take. So I'm gonna go ahead and press confirm and go fly now. 
Okay, a few seconds later I'm uh, here in the flight preparation screen and so you can see that the cargo is actually loading up right here. Uh, obviously not a big deal for a small aircraft here, it will turn green very very soon. Uh, won't take long at all to load in that cargo. Uh, obviously on some of those bigger aircraft it will take quite a long time to f uh, load up cargo and passengers and that's where unlocking the skill tree comes into play. Unlock some of the skills that will help you uh, load up things a lot faster. So passengers are okay. Uh, fuel loading has finished, cargo's all good, and so all I need to do right here is put in my destination in step number two. Now I'm going to KNBC, so KNBC, and what it automatically does is give you your alternate airport. You're not going to need to worry about that too much at the moment, but uh, if you come across some bad weather in the future and your AI pilots are flying, uh, that's something that will be needed that you will need to take into account. Uh, now you can actually transport pilots, I'm not going to be doing that, I'm going to be flying it myself. I don't need to hire a pilot because I'm going to be flying this flight myself. So with all that done, everything's in the green, I'm ready to go to the flight tracking page. Okay everybody, here we are in the flight tracking page and uh, this uh, tracking page is the one that will be up right throughout your flight so you can, uh, when, when we start you'll be able to see where we're located and you'll see yourself sort of moving across the map. So what you want to see down the left hand side here is all the green ticks. Uh, now I haven't set up the flight in the simulator so uh, that's why it's, shown, it's not showing me at any location at the moment but it is showing that I've got the right model. Uh, everything, date, fuel, payload is all good. So what we need to do now everybody is jump into the simulator. So I'll do that now. All right, we're in the flight planning page. So all you need to do is set up your flight just as normal as you always would. Uh, so my departure airport is uh, Myrtle Beach right there. Uh, I'm going to throw myself uh, into a gate, just a small gate right there. Uh, I always just take note of the wind uh, before I take off. So it's a northerly wind. Uh, so that's nice and easy. I'll be taking off to the north. Uh, and arrival airport is KNBC, KNBC, uh, there we go, we've selected that and uh, it's 115 nautical miles up there. So what I've got to do now is I just press fly and then I'll meet you once we're inside the simulator. Okay everybody, I'm inside the simulator right now so I'll just pull across the uh, on-air client right there and as you can see it's showing me located here at Myrtle Beach and uh, you know we're going to be heading off to uh, KNBC. So you'll see now that we've got everything, uh, all the t all the uh, areas are tick green so that's great, uh, we're at the right location. So all you need to do is to start tracking your flight, you want to make sure your engine everything's off because you're going to need to set that up as you go otherwise you're going to get some penalties. You go start tracking and boom you'd see in the background I'll just move this out of the road see how it automatically changed the time of day for me that's what it's going to do so you don't need to set up time of day or anything in your simulator your clients going to adjust those settings uh, automatically and it's going to take into account any GMT offset you've got in there so I adjusted it just to make sure that I was going to be flying in daylight just to make my life a little bit easier so if I just pull the client back across here uh, you'll see that uh, it's now uh, logging uh, the duration of my flight, it's going to show how much fuel I've got on board. Over here will change if the top right hand corner is going to give you all the uh, information about uh, the flight itself, you know, what your altitude is, all that sort of stuff. Down below here, you can see the meter for your destination airport, which is uh, really handy. The other thing, uh, you can go show meters, and you can see little wind arrows right there, so you can see which way the direction, uh, which direction the wind is going, th going from, coming from, I should say. Uh, so that's a nice visual representation to help you out when you're you know, approaching an airport. So I'll turn those off. Uh, but I can see it's a northerly type wind so I'll uh, be taking off from a northerly facing runway here in Myrtle Beach. So with that said, let's go ahead and start up our aircraft. Uh, and it does require you to start it up properly to a certain degree. A few things you need to know that you could get caught out on is make sure you've got your beacon light on before you start your engine. It might get you on that. So generally what I'll do is I'll just put my throttle in just a little bit now before I get. Let's uh, throw on the master switches right there. I am going to throw on my beacon. Uh, my fuel is already set right there so there's no problem. Uh, so I can go ahead and start things up. Your flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the engines. And there you go. You get the notification from, air, from on air just saying, hey, we're going to monitor your flight. So that's all good. So you can go ahead and turn the other lights on you like, throw your avionics on. Uh, and you can see that uh, I'm actually departing to the west. I think I said east before, but I um, 
must have been looking at it backwards. Uh, so west, even, so it's an even altitude that I'm going to fly at. Uh, we'll look at the conditions. If I can fly VFR, I'll go do 4,500 feet. Otherwise, I'll do 4,000 feet. Uh, that doesn't matter too much, by the way. Uh, so what I'm just checking for here is everything in the green fuel flow is vacuum will come up uh, everything else is in the green including your oil temperature so really ladies and gentlemen it's as uh, simple as that as starting up your aircraft um, had I started the aircraft without the beacon on I would have got a little pop up saying oi you've started the engine penalty uh, the other thing just to take into account I'll do it right now is that you must take off with some flaps applied so I'm going to put one notch of flaps on, even though I'm taking off for a, from a runway that just simply doesn't need flaps for this particular aircraft, on air requires you to have flaps, so just go ahead and do that. So what I'll do ladies and gentlemen is, let me go and taxi out to the runway for our, it's actually, uh, I am going to have to still depart from the north given the wind can, uh, direction, uh, but uh, we'll take off to the north, make a left hand uh, turn and then proceed on our way down to uh, KNBC. So I'll meet you once I'm ready to go out on the runway. Okay, we're lined up on the active, we're ready to go. So let's give a full power, smoothly through to full power. Uh, I'm actually using the Sciatech uh, X52 Pro now. I uh, gave up on my Extreme 3D Pro <laughs> joystick. It just was way too sensitive. Uh, sensitive. I found that the uh, X52 has uh, helped quite a bit. Um, it's still pretty ultra sensitive so hopefully they fix those sensitivity uh, issues. But anyway here we are. We're a little bit wobbly on the uh, on the rudder here. But we'll get up to speed. Start to just put a little bit of back pressure on here and she should just start flying herself. She does. Airborne time logged. I'm throwing flaps straight up because we do not need them. And I'm going to trim for about 70, about 80 knots I think I'll trim for. Oh, it's just told me I'm airborne without flaps. Ha! <laughs> okay. So there we go. There's a trick for everybody. You've got to wait until, uh, uh, for a few moments here just to make sure that it registers you as a uh, positive rate of climb before you put your flaps up. So I'll, I'll get stung with a bit of a um, penalty right there, but uh, there you go. At least it shows you that. Uh, I'll go ahead and just change this uh, to uh, GPS from my CDI right here. So there's actually not a heck of a lot to see right here, and uh, we'll get up to cruise, and then I'll just show you how the tracking, uh, the client uh, covers off your tracking. So I'll meet you once I get up to cruise altitude. See you soon. Okay, here we are everybody cruising along at our cruise altitude of 4,000 feet uh, and some beautiful scenery there in the background. But uh, let's grab our on-air client right here. And uh, as you can see, we've made some good progress here towards Beaufort from Myrtle Beach. Uh, and uh, you can see that we've moved across this map as we uh, make our way down the uh, east coast of the United States. Now, I can toggle up the airport data right here. I can see that... Uh, the wind is still, uh, where are we, wind, oh, uh, wind is still 020 at 6 knots, uh, so still looking to uh, scoot around and uh, go up probably runway 05 right there. Uh, we could actually go on one of the cross runways, but let's go up north just to make it nice and easy. And you can see over the right hand side here, uh, we've got our, um, our the detail around our flights, around about 4,000 feet. Uh, and a few other bits of information so uh, with all that said what I'll do is uh, I'll complete the rest of this flight and let's uh, I'll join you once I'm on my final approach so I'll catch you then okay we're on uh, short finals right here we grabbed a pretty tight uh, base leg and made a pretty sharp turn into here onto runway uh, 05 here we're just looking to trim out to about 70 a little bit slow not too bad though just aiming for the big markers. Looking good. Let's cut the power. Did a little bit late there. And let's just flare just a little bit. A little bit sensitive here. Well. Landing time log. Man, I tell you what. Landed at Kilo November Bravo Charlie. Beaufort MCAS slash Merritt Field slash. Let's get rid of the flaps, man, my joystick. This one's still real sensitive, I tell you what. It's so hard to land smoothly. Anyway, I'll meet you back at the terminal. We can wrap up the flight. 
Okay, we'll just find a parking spot just over here will do. Okay, stop the uh, plane right there. We'll set our parking brake. Now what you've got to do is make sure you turn your engine off with no lights on. So we're going to turn all our lights off. Let's turn our avionics off and let's just pull the mixture back to cut off. Engine off time log. End of flight. Registered in on air company. And there we go. We got the uh, confirmation that the flight has been uh, has been completed and it's just saying hey the aircraft is ready with no cargo on board and no passengers and 7.3 gallons of fuel. So let's go and grab the on air client right here. And uh, here we go, we'll get rid of these messages. So let's just check this out. This is the summary of your flight. So it just shows uh, what you've uh, gone ahead and done. Uh, the increase is 0.2%. Uh, and I did get that little penalty. You remember when I took off 0.02 penalty. So not a huge penalty, but I'm, bit, I'm not altogether happy with that because I did not need for flaps for that flight. But anyway, I did get the comfort bonus because I respected all rules. Uh, I got a 10% uh, safety bonus because all rules were respected. Uh, and I didn't get the handling bonus because the flaps uh, issue once again. Here goes the engine wear and tear. Uh, so there we go. So if we go up to tutorial and go to display. Okay, and it says, congrats, you have finished the tutorial. You now have the basics to conduct to your flight. So you can claim my rewards. Go back to the lobby. And here we are in the lobby. So if we can see here that there's a check mark on the tutorial. Let's go into our company. And we're in our company dashboard right here. So if we go to my company, actually we can just go right here to aircraft. And uh, there we go. We've actually got two for some reason. Hmm, that's interesting. It's given me two aircraft. How about that? Ha! Anyway, uh, maybe one of these is rented potentially from another flight. Could be, but the end answer is if we go into the uh, aircraft details. So we drop down here, go to details. And here you go in the details, we can see it's owned by me right here. So uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you obtain a free aircraft. Highly recommend you do it. Save on a number of fees, including aircraft rental. Uh, and it's always cool to have your own little aircraft to control because then you can uh, hire some AI pilots and get them to do a bunch of jobs. We'll cover that off in some future videos. Uh, also, that shows you how to set up a flight and how the client interacts with the flight in uh, Flight Simulator. So hopefully that was helpful for you all. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button down below. Uh, watch out for some future videos. I'll definitely do some more tutorials and a few more flights. Uh, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And until next time, everybody, take it easy.